now they're going to get him some, some shots at the basket. He's got to make himself more available. Kick save by Milo Stovall and a new clock for Kentucky with Prince, Hawkins, Hayes, Bogans, and Camaro. Same team that started for Tubby Smith on the floor. And a reach around by Stovall and the foul. Look at Valparaiso's history in the NCAA tournament going back to 1996. And of course that only time that they won a game, they won two against Mississippi, Old Miss and uh, Florida State and that Sweet 16 uh, team of 1998 and that incredible final shot by uh, Bryce Drew, coach's son, and one of the famous moments in NCAA uh, history. Or at least most memorable shots as Stovall up high to collect the rebound and Valpo trying to get an early basket. They have 12 turnovers, the Crusaders, and only nine field goals. Testimony to this very tough, quick defense of Kentucky. And it is, Dick. You know, it's not that they're, they're doing a lot of trapping or anything like that. It's just basic stay in front of your man, good pressure, challenge the shots, get some deflections, and finally something drops for Valpo as... Uh, Joaquin Gomez has his first points of the game, a three, and it's a 41-26 Kentucky lead. Gomez can knock him down. There's just about everybody on this team except the centers can shoot the three. Inside drive denied as Tayshawn Prince comes away empty. And Valpo hoping uh, Gomez's three will inspire a scoring run as Groffs gets the bounce. So five unanswered points to open the second half for Valparaiso. Touch it up for Rydas Groffs. He's catching it now. He's not even thinking about anything else. He's going to look for his own shot, not to rely on anybody else. And true to Coach Homer Drew's word, Valpo playing more aggressively on the defensive end. Bogans for a three, and Keith Bogans was really slumped from three-point range compared to his history at Kentucky, hitting a less than 30% has hit. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to our studios here in New York, Singular at the Half. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg, our score at halftime, Missouri leading Miami by a score of 38 to 30, and you get the feeling that Miami is not at all out of this game. In fact, we haven't seen their best yet. Exactly. They've turned the ball over an awful lot, haven't made shots when they've gotten them. They've been a little impatient as you take a look at the this, this super stat here. Clarence Gilbert doing a nice job, but Missouri is winning this game because they're throwing the ball inside, 20 points in the paint, and they average eight three-point field goal makes per game, so they're doing it in the paint so far. All right, Clark, meanwhile, first-round action in the south bracket in Greenville, South Carolina. Kent State with a 39-33 lead on the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Let's take you there live and join the action with Kevin Harlan and John Sunford. Kent State has led most of the way, the 10th seed here in Greenville, South Carolina. Petre Shaw has 12 points, the senior leader. 47% shooting for Kent State. And it's McFarland outside to Victor Williams. And a rebound inside by Gates. What has Oklahoma State done, John, to get back in this game? Well, good fight inside by Gates. They have slowly gotten themselves back in the offensive end, but every time they're getting closer, Kent State has an answer. Hopkins with a big one. Kent State coming off their most successful season in school history from the Mid-American Conference and Oklahoma State from the Big 12. Huffman three of three on three-point shooting today. Their ability to break down this Cowboy defense off the dribble and find open shooters. We mentioned four guys can handle, four guys can shoot it on the offensive end for Kent State. Hands and Deion Z, a nice ball rotation. Williams, Gatson for three over Huffman. Volleyball inside, retrieved by Gerwick, the freshman. The body is down, that's Gates. And a foul called on Gates. Biggest lead this afternoon for Kent State has been 15. One small two-point lead early in the game for the Cowboys. The shooting has been as high as 60% for Kent State and for Oklahoma State. That time it was 19% in the first half. And Golden Flashes have done a better job again. They pack it inside and make this Cowboy team beat them from the outside. They've not been able to hit many. John Zian leading into Gates and gets his own miss. But a whistle blown and a foul called. And they put it on Shaw. 
which is his second of the game. Kent State has won 18 consecutive games. A streak where they have outscored their opponent by 17 a game and outshot them by 10 percent a game. Well, at 23 of 24, the lone loss in that streak, the last second shot to Buffalo in a game that they should have won that one also. Had control in the last minute of that game. After starting four and four, Stan Heath really got this club on the right track. A year ago, Gary Waters led them the NCAA, where they beat Indiana in the first round, lost to Cincinnati. Gary Waters moved on to Rutgers. Stan Heath comes in from his assistant position at Michigan State. Started four and four. Concerns from everywhere. But, uh, they righted the ship. Good senior leadership on this ball club. Oklahoma State, on the other hand, John began the season winning 15 of their first 16 games. Then some injuries set in, and they've been scrambling since. Now the biggest key: the injury to Maurice Baker. Throughout the conference play in the Big 12, not healthy. Now he's healthier, but his confidence isn't high. But we saw what he means to his team late in the first half to get him closer. Huffman picked up by Sanders, a gate screen. That means McFarland there with the defense and a bad pass and another turnover by Kent State. And that is their seventh. Oklahoma State has eight, but the Cowboys coming back down by ten. The 10th seed in the South, Kent State, coming off their best season in school history for the Mid-American Conference. Began this season, John, virtually flawless. Had some trouble later on, came back. And they're here now at 27-5. and five. In the game today, they were virtually flawless. Had some problems late first half. Now, in their last seven possessions, three turnovers, and Oklahoma State has picked up their game. Kent State scoring easier on our, their offensive end in Oklahoma State. Good block defensively. Jan Zian inside puts it in for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. He's got 13 points. He averages 12 a game. And Gates will hobble off the floor. And they'll bring back in Brian Bedford, Oklahoma State. Fourth place finisher in the Big 12. Finished number 14 in the regular season AP poll. They have trailed by as many as 15 points this afternoon. Shooting now 40%. Kent State shooting 48%. And Eddie Sutton might tell you that he felt they were probably overrated all season long. Mitchell with a good crossover on Ganson. McFarland fighting with Thomas inside for the rebound. And out of bounds it goes. So Oklahoma State still trying to find its way around the Golden Flashes continue to lead 44 to 36. Meanwhile, first round East action in St. Louis, Kentucky leading Valparaiso. Watch Jules Kamara find Chuck Hayes down the lane for the layup. The Wildcats lead by two early. But then Valparaiso's Lubos Martin going to find Graffs inside. Radis Graffs ties the score at four. But it was all Kentucky after that. Tayshawn Pen Prince penetration and dime dropping for Kamara. And then it's Keith Bogans finding Tayshawn Prince behind the defense. Hogan's had a good first half. He had 10 points in all, dishing out assists as well. Kentucky leading by a score of 47 to 28. Remind you, the next round of games coming your way here on CBS in the Midwest. Number 10 seed Pepperdine takes on Wake Forest, the number 7 seed. In the South, Florida Atlantic meets number 2 Alabama. In the East, Tulsa will take on 5th seed Marquette. And out West, Davidson and number four seed Ohio State. We will send you back for the second half of your game in Albuquerque right after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self expression nationwide. 67% for the free throw line. Good stroke. And it gets them both. 46 39. It's Kent State by seven. And Gerwig comes back in the lineup, the freshman. I really feel with the four ball handlers that Kent State has, and because they come off screens and move so well, Oklahoma State double teaming and doing that, Gerwig should be able to step inside and get some open looks. Baker with it. Good pass to gets it outside. Sanders for three. Knocks it another. Sanders, a 36% three point shooter, does not look to shoot a lot of them. He's knocked in two in a row. He's got eight points, two of five, shooting threes this afternoon. 
Gates to Huffman. Gerwig with the screen. It frees Huffman to throw inside to Gates. He goes against McFarland, but no matter. Looks easier on Kent State's end, doesn't it? The offensive sets. They're getting every look they want. Jackson is a 38% three-point shooter, as John just said. He's at two straight from above the arc. And this time he decides to penetrate with a charge. Jackson picks up his third. Good defense by Mitchell. Well, Sanders uh, spotting up on the left side. He hit a couple. Gadsden puts it on the floor. Andrew Mitchell, the 5'11 senior. All Mac first team. Quick. Tough. Gerwig and Gates down low. Shaw, Huffman, and Mitchell, the five for the Golden Flashes of Kent State. Shaw with it now. Got a screen from Huffman. And if you're Sanders defensively guarding Huffman, I think you want him to put it in his left hand. Although he's very good, he's better with the right hand. Off the bounce. Shaw to Gates, who's free. And inside, Gerwig trying to climb the ladder, and a foul is inside against Kent State. And that goes on the freshman Gerwig from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Conference coach of the year, John, in his first year, not a bad accomplishment for Stan Heath. Not at all. 27 wins, 27 and 5, a conference championship in the Mid American Conference. He appreciates Mac basketball, played at Eastern Michigan, was an assistant at Bowling Green. Victor Williams in. Melvin Sanders is coming. He's got the ball and fires a three. Mitchell with the rebound. And see it out there along with McFarland, Baker, Sanders, and Williams. That's the five for Oklahoma State. We just under 13 minutes to play here in the first half. First game, South Region. Huffman. He's been quiet. Think of Gerwig, though, after on, on all this movement. He will be the guy that will be free because of the way Oklahoma State is jumping out defensively. And a foul called on Gates. He now has three fouls. And that is, uh, along with Gerwig, the high number in terms of fouls for Kent State. And Zian has three for Oklahoma State. Six point game. Kent State has led by as many as 15. And Sanders for three. Mitchell chases down the rebound. Huffman three on one with Bedford and Shaw. And sandwiched inside in a foul. See if they give him two, two shots. Yeah, they yeah. do. Yep. You know, on the other end, you wonder why Mo Baker doesn't take the layup. He's right at the rim, decides to pass it out. Three on one break. Hustle back by McFarland. Good whistle. Two free throws. Dimitri Shaw, one of the most fascinating players in the entire tournament. He began his college career at Tulane to play for Perry Clark. When he leaves, he transfers. He is a biochemistry and pre-med major. And to show you his popularity, not only on this team, but campus-wide, he was the homecoming kid elected this past year at Kent State. Not bad. The emotional leader of this ball club, two-time MAC Defensive Player of the Year. Always chatting, as you can see him on the foul line. He's talking to his teammates, the leader of the defensive drills yesterday in practice. Golden flashes by seven. Here comes Baker, picked up by Huffman, guarded by Mitchell. Now on top to Victor Williams. He'll dance on Mitchell and take it inside. It was foul. Mitchell may have been uh, clawing and he picks up the foul. That's the first on him. Victor Williams. That's a quick first step, and when he explodes, now he's 170 pounds. Andrew Mitchell 160. And when little point guards go at each other, I'm sure Victor Williams, for the first time all season, goes, I think I'm, I'm a bigger body than my opponent. Williams took the place of Baker when Baker was injured, and near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, John and I will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed approximately $8 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. He gets the second one to drop. Matchup now, Victor Williams on Trevor Huffman. Cowboys have not been successful keeping Huffman away from running the offensive sets for Kent State. 
Five-point game, under 12 to play. Mitchell finds some space. Rebound by Shaw. Tough rebound. And Mitchell will take it again. This time to Shaw. What a shot by Shaw! Almost looked like it was rolling down his arm. I'm not sure how he got it up. And he's right-handed shot with the left hand. 15 points now for Shaw. And they go inside. Mitchell has it. Here comes Huffman. He drives inside. Mitchell outside for three. And a rebound by Crawford during the game. One on one. Williams switching inside with the foul. Shaw goes inside and shoot with either hand just as effective. They take a look at the penetration inside by Mitchell and this ball looks like it's almost leaving his fingertips. Good kiss off the glass. This contest now uh, 11 minutes left in this game getting a little heated. Will Baker took a shot from Andrew Mitchell to the head had some words. State has not had any injuries, John, this season. No player has missed a single game to injury. That was something a lot of teams can't say. Yeah. Makes coaching easier. <laughs> so the game remains close here in Greenville, South Carolina. 51 to 46. Again, Detroit. Johnson. One of the keys for this Missouri team, they wanted to pound it inside to Johnson to open up some things outside. Gilbert for three, rims up, holding, swooping in. Heck of a play, heck of an effort. He can really, really get up in the air. He is awful. It's good once again. He's starting to warm up a little bit. Back-to-back -back field goals for Kareem Rush. Now Salmons down the lane and draws the foul. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Today, Chevrolet has contributed approximately $8 million to the general scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. John Salmons, you see him tucking in his shirt right there. You just get the idea that he's sort of tired of the way this game is going. The last couple of possessions, he's taken the ball on offense and gotten it down the court quickly. Salmons shooting two. Gets the first one to go in the season high for the young man from Philadelphia at 25 versus Pittsburgh. 23 against Providence. Also a good game against St. Francis in Miami. Here's a team that got off to a 14-0 start, start the season. And they, they ended up, Gus, with the most wins in the history of the University of Miami. Some solid wins, too, beating Clemson, Indiana, Georgetown during that 14-game winning streak. Miami. Stokes for three. Miami drops into the zone, and Stokes is a guy who doesn't score a lot, but he's capable of double-figure scoring. And for Perry Clark, if Stokes starts hitting his shots, you have major trouble as Missouri takes its largest lead of the game. 15 points. And the foul is called against Gage, his fourth. One of the problems that Missouri is having is fouls. And there, Quinn Snyder, you can see that's his reaction to that foul call. You don't want to let Miami get to the free throw line. And as the fouls pile up, they're almost there. My goodness, Coach Snyder, a hair out of place. <laughs> <laughs> He's been talking to Wesley Stokes. Yes, he has. Who will cut their hair first, Coach Snyder or Wesley? Tyler gets the basket on the other end. Now Rush slicing down the lane, hands it off to Ferguson. Power dribble, gets it up and in. And that's when Kareem Rush is at his best for Missouri. He's got to attack, but when he attacks, he can't always be looking for his own shot. Draws so much attention defensively. That time he made a great assist. Rice off the mark on the three. Stokes with the weak side rebound. Here come the Tigers, leading at 51-36. Paulding down the lane. Pivots and is fouled. 
Kareem Rush is a great scorer. We said part scorer, part slasher, but look at all the attention he draws defensively. Four white shirts come to him, and he finds the open man. That is a tremendous play. Watch all the Miami guys go around Kareem Rush, and when number 21's got the ball and is headed to the basket, that's a pretty good idea, but you've got to find the other black shirts out there on the court because Kareem Rush did a nice job with that assist. So Ricky Paulding at the line. That's the first one to go. And his father, Ricky Sr., is a sales trainer for MCI. Mom, a social worker. Very, very soft-spoken young man. I had a chance to chat with him momentarily before the game. And I told him, you look like you could be uh, Kareem Rush's little brother. He said, that's not the first time I've heard it. As he gets the second one to go, 15-57 to go. Missouri trying to pull away. On his roster. He says they come, they understand the game of basketball. They grow up playing a, a very good club competition. The, the three-point line, such a big part of their game. He said the big area that is so difficult, they just do not have that defensive mentality, the, the defensive hunger and toughness that most of the kids in the United States have. And there is a defensive move. Well done. Alan Ortiz back to the other end over Blevins, and Blevins with a foul. His second. Well, right back to the line. He knows the way. Stalin Ortiz. Tubby Smith. Well, Ortiz very active on the weak side of that zone, anticipating that pass, jumping into the passing lane. Doing a good job there. And Valpo's going to have to do a little bit more of that. They are so steeped in playing their zone, and they have different looking zones. It bends and stretches, but when you are down by 14 15 points 9 10 minutes to go left in the game you got to create some havoc you got to get some steals get some easy baskets you, you wonder if Homer Drew's team can get up and put some pressure on uh, in the backcourt with some kind of a zone trap Ortiz after making three in a row misses there you saw Cliff Hawkins come back in for Blevins no one back for Valparaiso and an easy two for Eric Daniels. Nick, that's the third time we've seen that. Not only will it's no pressure defensive trap, any kind of defense in the backcourt, you just go down the other end and get a high percentage shot. Way outside, it appeared that uh, Ortiz got a hand in the face. And again, left alone is Kamara, and the only way to stop him was to foul him, and uh, it appeared to be Rytus Groff's, his third. Oh, the previous play after the, the missed free throw. Look at the players getting back on defense, not seeing man and ball. These two fellas are in position, but nobody sees that man going over the basket except Tayshawn Prince right down the middle of the floor. That's just inexcusable, lazy transition defense. And here's uh, the international representative for Kentucky from Senegal, Jules Kamara. Averaged uh, seven points a game as a sophomore and just under six this year. They can see the, the body on Jules Kamara. That 225, I think, is, is generous. They would like him to weigh 225. He's probably a lot closer to 200. A long drink of water, but that length is certainly valuable. Long pass for Stovall just back in the game, and once again, Fitz showing you his defensive prowess. He's been all over the court. I think he had to be a defensive back in the football in high school. He is unbelievable in chasing those passes down. Not a quarterback. He's missed <laughs> his two shots, missed everything. His receivers are was, wide open. I think that was a, yeah, a pass to nobody. <laughs> Inside the cross against Kamara. And no basket. That's the second one that uh, not allowed because of the foul on the floor. The third against Kamara. Back comes uh, Lubosh Barton. And, uh, hoping that his star will shine here with just under nine minutes to go. Just a, just a quick note on Gerald Fitch. He's actually a good percentage shooter, 47% from the field, 36 from beyond the arc. But I think there's a lot weighing on his mind coming into this tournament, having to face the media, answer all the questions of his problems of the recent weeks. Got a nice smile on his face right now. Other than poor shooting, he's doing a fabulous job defensively. They're saying Kamara took that one off the iron. Uh, basket 
Interference, goaltending against Kamara, so that free throw will be allowed. Well, you see, an in international basketball, this is okay, but again, watch up here. Ball still on top of the rim, touching any part of the rim as Jules Kamara takes it off. From this angle, Tubby Smith didn't see it that way. Tubby thinking a little internationally himself. <laughs> so a 15-point Kentucky lead with 8.40 to go. Good setup inside and a foul reaching in Stovall of Valparaiso. Or was it Barton? Stovall second. Team fouls. Uh, Kentucky with nine in the second half and only two make it three now whistled against Valpo. Hawkins and Barton collects the rebound. He was harassed and eventually traveling is the call against Barton. Yeah, I, I think they're going to rule that he passed himself. He flipped the ball behind his behind his back. Let's take a look at it. This is Barton here. He's going to throw the ball behind his back, but you know that's like putting the ball down to start your first dribble. I, I don't understand. You're not allowed to throw a pass to yourself or take a shot uh, where it doesn't hit anything and catch it. That is a walking violation, but in my mind, that's starting a dribble. Mike Nelke with a foul, sending Prince to the line. Back to a 16-point lead as Prince looks for his 13th point. Now, Barton had done that behind his back and then picked the ball up and then started dribbling. That would be something different, but to continue to dribble out of that seems to me to be a legal play. Deal unable to hit. Good defense again for Kentucky, and what a setup pass! And goaltending will be the call. Oh, Fitch has his fourth point to match his number. Eight minutes to go, and Kentucky never relinquishing the lead throughout this game, shooting over 60 percent in the 62 percent of the second half. So ball. This fires Daniels rebounds. Not only Kentucky shooting the ball while well, they are playing exceptional man to man defense. And it's why they win 20 games and why they're expected to win even more games than that. They are capable of that kind of individual and team defense. They can get right in your face and make it very difficult for you to get into any kind of solid offense. Daniels inside for the short jumper and he builds the lead to 19. Six points for Daniels. And the big men of Kentucky looking very sharp. Marquis says still, he's in there. Daniels looks good. Hey, he's got off to a great start in this game. Stovall misses. Here's Daniels, and he had pitch open down court and a foul by Valparaiso. Take a look at Eric Daniels, the sophomore from Cincinnati. A big man so active for this Kentucky ball club, taking it to the basket with authority. One way. Shaw, 17 from Trevor Huffman, leading the Golden Flashes. 15 points from Yanzian of Oklahoma State. Just under seven to play. 59 to 50 is the score. With John Sunbold and Spencer Tillman. This is Kevin Harlan. Yanson. Houghton by Mitchell. Shot clock at three. And Ganson for three. Short caught by Gerwig and a shot clock violation. Did not recognize a shot clock early. And Eddie Sutton with a shake of the head. Kent State, the tempo is in their favor. The style of play in their favor. Controlling everything again on this offensive end. They're solid defensively. This is where Oklahoma State has to get after them to see if they can just change the tempo up. Ganson, by the way, one of eight shooting for the Cowboys. Huffman goes inside through Gerwin. Number 10 seed, Kent State, leading 
Seventh seeded Oklahoma State. Huffman for three. Rebound inside is corralled by Sanders. Ahead it goes to Zian, who slides by Huffman for two. It's a seven point game. And State is led by as many as 15. Rebound by Sanders and Yanzian up ahead. Now this Oklahoma State team, a little more pressure. Again, change the tempo just to let try to get back in this thing. Good time for it. Yeah, and Huffman's just too good with the ball. Oklahoma State has to do some things. Kent State, if they're allowed to keep moving offensively and pick their ways about it, they're going to win this game. Kent State by 7, 59, 52 with under six to play. That's a foul, player. What? Get out of here, man. That's the hack. My man got three signature moves. Hacking, hacking, and hacking. Come on, baby. Whatever, though. If you quick, that fool ain't hard to shake. And, yo, it didn't even matter that there wasn't a ref, because I had these, the Nike Air Flight Elevates. You can't hack what you can't catch, right? You can only get them at Foot Locker. Kent State is at seven three-point shots, John, among the many reasons why they've been able to hold on to a lead right now, 59-52. Demetric Shaw, Trevor Huffman. Huffman has really caused everything off the bounce, off his dribble. Get inside the paint, fired outside. Shaw's knocked in the open looks. Last time down, he threw one to Gerwig, the freshman. He's got to handle those, because I think Gerwig's the guy who's going to be open down the stretch as this Oklahoma State team tries to double, or tries to force the issue when uh, Huffman gets inside the paint. Three seniors starting the backcourt for the Golden Flashes out of the Mid-American Conference. Here is Huffman dancing on Victor Williams who knocks the ball away with the steal. Huffman comes right back. They jump it and the arrow pointing the other way. A good break for Kent State even though they give up possession. But if Victor Williams after the after the active hands watch this knock one. If he comes up with this ball right here they've got a layup on the other end. Gatson had taken off good hustle by Huffman just to tie him up. Gerwig will leave. We'll bring back in Eric Thomas with Gates, Huffman, Shaw, and Mitchell as the five for Kent State. Gadsden in. McFarland is in. Got see it down low. Victor Williams gets it on top, but the guy that makes the team go up more big for Oklahoma State. Williams drives the baseline. Five point game. Again, Huffman gets it inbounds, and he's going to control the pace. Kent State, four guys that can handle it on the offensive end and four that can shoot it. With another, Eric Thomas can also shoot. This is the fifth time that Oklahoma State has come to within five in this second half. Mitchell down the lane with a spectacular play. Senior with confidence, two of 12 from the field before that one. Will not continue to miss and not play. He's 5'11", soaring above them all. And you can see it at the other end. Puts it through. He now has 19 points to lead Oklahoma State with four and a half to play. Kent State led by 15. They were up in the 60s, the low 60s shooting. The first part of this game. Down to 45%. Oklahoma State at 42%. And a state foul, a Oklahoma State foul right there. Not a good foul. You step out defensively. You see Huffman coming off the screen. McFarland steps out, but don't reach and don't slap. You want to be as solid on the defensive end. Now you allow Trevor Huffman, the senior, all-time leading scorer in Kent State history, to go to the foul line. He is four of five from the free throw line today. McFarland picks up his second personal foul. And some nervous golden flashes watch from their sideline. Huffman. Nails the first, the lead is six. Well, six Big 12 teams in the tournament, and the flagship team, the Kansas Jayhawks, there, right back of them. High seed Oklahoma. Sienna won the opening round game. The record seven California schools jump in the field. The pod system in full display today. A new era in the 64 team, 65 team tournament. Yes, it is. Good move by Gatson. Who now is one of nine shooting? Ganson has had a horrible afternoon from the field. But what happens though, even if he's missing, if he gets that shot, six or seven footer inside the paint defensively, Kent State's going to have to jump up, try to block his shot. It allows avenues for a guy like McFarland to go offensive rebound. Gerwig picks up his fourth foul, and he will lumber to the sideline. 
they've got Ivan McFarlane, a sophomore from Sugarland, Texas, at the free throw line, a 64% free throw shooter. Listen as a sophomore, but Johnny is playing his first season of college ball, academically ineligible last year. His own shooting this afternoon has been good for the Cowboys. 13 of 15, and for the Kent State Golden Flashes, 13 of 17. McFarland offensively improved throughout the Big 12 season. Always a good rebounder. Eight double-figure rebounding games. A little full-court pressure from Oklahoma State, a little trap. Third time the Cowboys have been within four. Timeout taken by Kent State. 3.55 in the second half. Eddie Sutton and his crew creeping closer, trailing by four. That's certainly what we have seen in this first game. Now Jared Nunez way outside his range and throws up an air ball and with it a timeout with. Free throws outstanding three point field goals leaning towards Kent State been a pretty well played ball game after the start but Oklahoma State has never gotten this game even within four but Kent State's always had an answer. Kent State with Eric Thomas out there Huffman Gates Mitchell. And Shaw, that is the five for the Golden Flashes, the number 10 seed against the seventh seed Cowboys. Huffman right down the lane, barreling to the hole. Thomas fights for it. And out of bounds. A strong move by Huffman. Oh. Huffman turns the corner. Kent State keeps the lead. And Marquette, the winner to meet, uh, it would appear, Kentucky on Saturday. Offense versus defense with Tulsa against Marquette. Marquette bursting onto the national scene this year with a ranking of ninth in the country. Fun team to watch, as is Tulsa. Can put points up on the board. Tulsa's small but quick, lightning quick. And uh, they'll get the ball up and down the court. It, it should be an interesting match. Under four to go. Back out to Hawkins. Ten on the clock. Great ball movement. Kamara Bogans. And Keith Bogans now leading Kentucky with 18 points. Doesn't get any better than that. Moving the ball like that, even the missed shots turn out good because you have the defense standing flat-footed and Bogan's able to get up there on the offensive board. Let's take a look. Nobody really holding it here. Once the ball is in action, the touch pass there by Bogan's is what set things up. And then good interior passing, big man to big man, and the little man, so to speak, six foot five, Keith Bogan's cleaning up. He looks like a totally different player today. Eric Daniels with a foul, his first, and at the line is Milo Stovall. That's his tenth point. He and Groves have been the offense for the Crusaders. Unable to nail the second. Kentucky with an 18 point lead. Interior passing. Prince has it stripped away. And it's Ortiz the other way. Ortiz for three. Stalin Ortiz. Ten points, just under his 11-point average on the year. Uh, Full-court pressure paying off that time as they're starting to extend their defense. Second straight steal for Valpo. Ortiz again and uh, trying to maneuver around Hawkins and the foul. Double bonus in effect for Homer Drew's Crusaders. Well, Stalin Ortiz, one of the many outstanding three-point shooters for Valpo, getting set up on that transition play. They couldn't find him. And then out of control are the Kentucky Wildcats not looking where they're dribbling. They've been sharp today with their passing and keeping themselves under control. But this is the first time they have seen any kind of full-court aggressive pressure from Valparaiso. Tubby Smith congratulating Eric Daniels on his play. I don't think he liked that last turnover. He, he likes what the big man was doing. Doesn't like 
Do you, you need more time after Kent State? Well, Kent State can spread the floor. They can get all kinds of looks because their ability to handle the ball. Gates fires. Rebound Shaw. It's 6-3. Skies inside. Or missed one that he needs to make. Normally does. Rebound by Baker. He's a blur spinning the other way. And a charge on Mo Baker. The last two possessions, Kevin, for Oklahoma State, as if they're playing with only 20 seconds left in the game. Only down four. Baker comes down, does not have numbers. Kent State back defensively, pull it back out. Baker's got six turnovers. But the Cowboys closing in on Kent State. Well, the area here, one-on-one -on -one situation with the 17 foul. Now, don't forget, this Valparaiso team has a lot of firepower from beyond the arc. Normally, you don't like to see a team just fire away, but when you're down by whatever it is, 12, 15 points, this is certainly a team well justified in launching those threes. They can get back in a hurry. Well, they pulled uh, to within 12 and possession after they were down by as much as 20 in this game. Barton with a drive and the foul before the shot. John Sunbold has missed five consecutive shots, two and a half to play in this first round game. Key for Kent State offensively, spacing. Give their guys room to put it on the floor. Take some time off because of the ability to handle the basketball. All five guys on the floor can handle, all five can shoot it. They break the press with ease. Here's Mitchell. As we've talked about all afternoon long, three seniors in the backcourt. All terrific ball handlers. Mitchell, one of them. And Williams wants to close the gap defensively, make Mitchell make a play. Farland knocked it away. Shaw gets it and puts it in. Big basket. He's got 20. And 10 seeded Kent State trying to pull the upset on top 64 58. And Mo Baker with a fake out Huffman. Under two to play. Baker not confident enough to pull the trigger. Double team, great defense by the Golden Flashes. Good hands by Huffman. Got his hand in the way, stole it, recovered. Again, spread the floor, be patient. Allow Mitchell to go to work out front. Kent State led by as many as 15 in the first half. Oklahoma State has been close numerous times in the second. Mitchell. And to Sanders and McFarland. And knocked out of bounds. Cowboys get it back. Demetrius Shaw has been spectacular on the offensive end. 20 points. And this one, the loose ball off the floor. Defensively, look at the active hands by Trevor Huffman. The recovery, another possession. Oklahoma State defensively gets one back. Victor Williams with it. And here's Gadsden, who's had a one of eight afternoon shooting. Working on Mitchell, knocked away by Gates, and out of bounds. 21 seconds on the shot clock, 112 remaining in regulation. Golden Flash is making it difficult for this Oklahoma State Cowboy team to score on the offensive end. They're ratcheting up their defense, and that has been key for Kent State earlier when Oklahoma State got back in the game. That's what they did on the defensive end themselves. Victor William into the following. And remember, Oklahoma State is not a team that has any catch and shoot players. They don't make a lot of threes. Oklahoma State and Kent State with a timeout each remaining. It's a four point game. Run by Valparaiso cutting Kentucky's 20 point lead down to 10. 2.03 to left. And the magic of March Madness, even the miracles represented by when Valpo four years ago, 13 seed, three seconds to go. How can they get a shot off? Bryce Drew, the coach's son, hits it and defeats Ole Miss, the number four seed, 70 to 69. Kent State holding on here late. First round South Region, our CBS Sports Line stand of the game. Outstanding free throw shooting at both teams for complete tournament coverage. Go to cbs.sportsline.com or America Online keyword. CBS Sportsline with John Sunbold and Spencer Tillman, Kevin Harlan. Greenville, South Carolina. Full court pressure by the seventh seeded Cowboys. Broken with ease. Two on one. Mitchell and Huffman. Oh, I thought he would bring it back out. Not a smart play. He's got two on one, and all he's got to do is just go to the corner and now have some spacing. A traveling violation. And the 11th turnover for Kent State, Oklahoma State with 14. 
That could be a big play right there. Tell me about the offense now of the Cowboys. Well, movement. They've got to find ways, and Williams is a guy right there to get it in the paint. Gatson. Double team. Good defense. More turnovers forced by the pressure defense of Kent State this afternoon. And Kevin, the reason Oklahoma State does struggle, they get bunched up because they do not have the perimeter shooters that can space it out, knock in jump shots. Victor Williams penetrates. Everything gets bunched up. Gatson goes to the baseline. Everything gets bunched up. But give Kent State credit defensively. Once there was a double team on the wing or on the baseline, Mitchell made a quick move to make that steal. Oklahoma State in the tournament the last handful of years. Losing in the first round a season to go to USC. Senior Mitchell hits it. Mitchell one of one for the free throw line. And he's got four steals. And John we mentioned this before, but at 5'11", he has seven rebounds, which leads everybody in this game. Now the senior 84% from the foul line. Struggled from the field this afternoon, only 3 of 13. Coming up big in the last minute. Six-point game, half minute to play. Got to hurry. Victor Williams, the crossover by Gates. Rebound by Shaw. Fouled by Sanders, and that may do it. Now Kent State fans can feel it. Behind us. They led from the start. Experienced team. Senior-laden team. Good ball handlers, good shooters. Never allowed Oklahoma State to get back to this game to get it even. Doing it with a young coach, Stan Heath, on the sidelines for Kent State. First year head coach. And Shaw hits it. An assistant with Tom Izzo at Michigan State, part of that national championship team a couple years ago. And he was so successful with a 17 and 1. Mid American Conference record. He was voted Conference Coach of the Year for his first season. Shaw watches the second one roll off. Jackson for three. And Mitchell with the rebound. He's got the lead in that category for Kent State this afternoon. Another Oklahoma State foul. Big win for the Mac again. Last year, Kent State knocked out Indiana in the first round. This year, a Big 12 school in Oklahoma State. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game from Kent State with his 18.2 rebound performance, Trevor Huffman. And from the Oklahoma State Cowboys, Frederick Genzian. And there's a look at Huffman. What a feeling, huh? They were confident when we walked, watched them practice yesterday, Kevin. A good feel about their club. They like the draw. <laughs> Zian will check out of the game. And they bring in Broxy. Antoine Broxy, a senior from Tampa, Florida. So this will be the last time he will step on a collegiate court. A nice move by Eddie Sutton. Letting the Cowboy fans cheer for Fred Jan Zian one more time. Sanders. And inside McFarland, and he is fouled with 10 seconds to play. Freeze, Virginia. Steps to the line. He averaged seven on the season. Not a great shooter, under 60% from the line, but perfect on that one. Now Kentucky, not a particularly good foul shooting team at just 67%. Valpo has no choice at this point. Try to score a point, commit a quick foul, hope for a for a couple of misses and uh, launch a couple of threes, but uh, I think they will be on that point. Kentucky led by 18 at the half. Nunez with a long three. He now has six. And Kentucky's lead at 12 with 51 seconds to go. Their year has gone. Well, after a break here, we'll give you 15th seed in Florida Atlantic against the second seed Crimson Tide of Alabama. And McFarland at the line. Mitchell will take it out. And the CBS most successful season of the is capped off 
with a first round win over 19-12 Oklahoma State. 19th win in a row. Impressive. Care what league you belong, your 19th straight win is to say it a lot. Yes, it is. Good win for Kent State. Confident ball club. So Kent State will advance. And they'll take on the winner of our next game, Alabama and Florida Atlantic. And so now for John Sunbold and Spencer Tillman, Kevin Harlan saying so long from Greenville, where Kent State has beat Oklahoma State 69-61. Now let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York. Kevin, thank you. First game of the tournament in the books. The Golden Flashes move on. 69-61 over Oklahoma State. Let's take you now to the first round East action in St. Louis, Kentucky and Valparaiso and join Dick Enberg and Matt Gukas. Here in St. Louis with 51 seconds to go, the University of Kentucky, the number four seed, with a 12-point lead over 13-seeded Valparaiso. Timeout. This is the eastern side of the action, and Kentucky has advanced, according to our experts, with 51 seconds to go, <laughs> and Marquette Tulsa awaits the Wildcats on Saturday. We'll see. Uh, Tom Crean's fine uh, Marquette team against that. I'm anxious to see this uh, Tulsa club may be the shortest team in the entire 64 team field. Well, Marquette is not the tallest team in the world either, so it's going to be a, a lot of average size and shorter size guys just running around chasing after each other. Not too many centers in there blocking things up. Gerald Fitz, the troubled sophomore at the line. Looking for his fifth point. Adding a little frosting to the Kentucky lead. Well, if there was any question whether or not Kentucky was going to be ready for this one, you can put that out of your mind right now. Toby Smith had his club ready, and the order of the day was defense. They came out and played tough, hard defense, made it very difficult for Valpo to get into anything. This man, Lupo Spartan, his first three of the day, he was shut out early, and that was a big key. Right as grass, the only Valpo player to get anything going offensively, and Kentucky was forcing turnovers and Dick at the other end of the floor I thought they really attacked a uh, Valpo zone very well got the ball in the middle of the floor got high percentage looks at the basket and if they didn't make the shot did a really did a number on the uh, offensive boards they really did a good job of getting the ball into the uh, big men inside at Estel and uh, Kamara and then back out to Bogans who if he can play at that level Kentucky uh, could make a long move in this tournament. And following uh, our action here, we'll go back to New York for an update on all the action. And then, of course, Marquette and Tulsa in game two of our quadruple header here from St. Louis. Now to 30 seconds. Inside it goes. Barton back to Stovall. Ortiz takes it inside for the 10 footer and Kamara with the rebound. And another foul by Valparaiso stops the clock with 19 seconds to go. So coming up next, some of you will see other games. Most of you will see Tulsa Marquette, but Pepperdine, Wake Forest, Florida Atlantic against Bama, and Davidson with the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Those are the games two of our four game. Uh, Marathon here on this Thursday, and of course the same tomorrow starts uh, shortly before noon here in St. Louis. Uh, the action, and uh, out there on the West Coast, you fans, it's an early wake up and a long, wonderful day of basketball action. As Ortiz comes out, well, after the disappointing loss by the Kentucky Wildcats to. South Carolina early in that uh, Southeast Conference tournament they had plenty of time to kind of get their store in order and work on their game and it looks sharp and I think a lot of teams in this bracket have that one eye open on these Kentucky Wildcats. So Prince with a rebound the final seconds and Kentucky advances here in St. Louis with a 15 point win over Valparaiso. 
Tubby Smith's cats did have fun today with Bogans leading the way with 21 Groff. Groffs with 21 for Valparaiso. And so Kentucky will await our next game here in St. Louis. Marquette and Tulsa to do battle. We'll go to New York and Greg Gumbel, but first, this word from your local station. Rush with the steal. Kareem Rush. Unbelievable afternoon. Has been patient. Allowed the game to come to him. 20 point a game score. He's not worried about his offense this afternoon. It's very impressive that a guy who scores that many points can have such a big impact on a game when he's not scoring. Alding drilling it from downtown, and Missouri feels it. They feel the second round coming. 449 to play. They take an 81-64 lead. Timeout Miami. That matches their biggest lead of the game. As we continue to travel the road to the Final Four, welcome back to our studio in New York. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. Time to look ahead to the next round of games coming your way here on CBS. Tipping at about 2.42 Eastern time in the Midwest will be Pepperdine and seventh seed Wake Forest. In the South, Florida Atlantic and second seed Alabama will tip at 2.53 Eastern time. Tulsa and Marquette will tip in the East at about 2.59. And then out West, Davidson and Ohio State, they will tip at about 10 minutes after 3 Eastern time. Now, let's recap. Kent State over Oklahoma State, 69-61, 19-game winning streak for the Golden Flashes. Demetric Shaw, open three-pointer, and the Flashes were up big early on. They kept the lead at 11. Andrew Mitchell leads it for Trevor Huffman, wide open. But then Oklahoma State, Melvin Sanders, dials in for a three. It's a four-point lead for the Golden Flashes. Not enough of that, though. Kent State's Andrew Mitchell to Demetric Shaw, three-pointer off the baseline, and the Golden Flashes just went crazy today. 69-61 over the Cowboys of Oklahoma State after the game. Our Spencer Tillman with the Kent State coach and one of his players. Sure, congratulations. Steely Dan wrote a song by the title, Hey 19, it's 19 and counting. Wow, you know, it was an unbelievable win. That was a tough game. And we had some guys like Trevor, Andrew, Antonio, and our whole bench just stepped up and, you know, terrific win for us. And we're ready for the next challenge. Let's talk to your star guard over at Trevor Huffman. 18 points. Excellent performance. You guys didn't miss a beat. Uh, you know, it's, you know, it's a credit to our teammates. You know, they really stepped up tonight. And uh, Oklahoma State's a great team. You know, they kept fighting. Um, you know, we got, we got to stop turning it over like that in the end when I, you know, dribble off my foot in the last seconds. But it was a great win for us. We're going to keep it rolling. Congratulations to both of you, Coach. Thank you. Congratulations indeed. The Golden Flashes now await the winner of FAU against Alabama. Meanwhile, first round in the East saw Kentucky roll over Valparaiso 83 to 68. What a day Keith Bogans had. He'll hit this open three. 21 points, five rebounds, three assists on the day. How about Bogans again from deep? Nobody challenges him. Nothing but net. Milo Stovall going to find Redis Graffs inside. The Valpo Crusaders trying to make a run. And then some nice passing around here by the Wildcats. Eventually, Marquise Estal will get the lay-in inside. It was a win for Kentucky, playing as well as they have played all season long. The Wildcats roll by a final of 83-68. to 68. And after the game, Armin Katayan to chat with Coach Tubby Smith and Keith Bogans. Coach, nice to see you smiling. What impressed you most about your team today? Well, our composure and our togetherness, we really were focused and, um, and the way we shared the ball. Obviously, we Shuffled his feet and traveled. His first turnover of the game. So with 3.51 to go, Missouri leads it 82 to 69. Keith wasn't making shot, but he's there now. And this is what we knew that Keith was capable. He's one of the best shooting guards in the country. And he's one of the best shooting guards I've ever coached. So um, I knew he could do it. And now he's doing it at the right time. Thank you, Coach. Keith, you struggled a lot during the season. What was the difference today? You found your rhythm. Well, today I wanted to come out and I wanted to attack the basket first. Um, I passed up some three-point shots early to try to get in the lane. And I knew once I got to the basket a couple times and got myself going, the outside jump shot would fall. Well, a terrific job today. Congratulations. Oh, thank thank you. So the Wildcats a winner. That marks 12 consecutive first-round wins in the NCAA tournament for the Kentucky Wildcats. They win it. Meanwhile, first-round action in the West in Albuquerque, Missouri, with a lead on Miami, 82-69 to 69 as time winds down. Darius Rice, the steal for the dunk. 20